the Sears Tower in Chicago is 400 metres high and a ball is dropped from the top of that tower. Two things to calculate the time taken for the ball to reach the ground and its velocity on reaching the ground. So any time you see something moving, any time you see motion of any type, uh, you're looking to apply the equations of motion. This is quite easy because you're purely looking at vertical motion only. Um, in our later examples, we'll look at both horizontal and vertical motion at the same time. But here, it's just something going straight down, uh, which, is, which are the examples that we'll kind of start off with, just to ease us into it. So we'll start off with trying to calculate the time taken for the ball to reach the ground. The first thing I would advise that you do in any equation of motion example, so in other words, anything with uh, a calculation on something that moves, is to jot down SUVAT, so that's all the variables that you've got in the three equations of motion that we talked about yesterday. And the Sears Tower is 400 metres high. The ball's dropped, so therefore its, it's vertical, uh, initial vertical velocity must be zero. You don't know what its final vertical velocity is, you've no idea about that. You do know its acceleration, because it's acceleration due to gravity, which we calculated a number for yesterday, which was close to the recognised value of 9.8. So this is 9.8 meters per second squared. And time is what we're looking for. So we're looking to find out time, and we've got S, U, and A. Look at your three equations of motion, making sure, of course, that you've not got more than one unknown, because you can't solve it there. The only equation that really suits the information we're given here is S equals UT plus a half UT squared. Because you've got S, U, and A, and you're looking for T. So it's a case of substituting your numbers in now. These equations are a wee bit more complicated than the type that we're used to, uh, previously in physics, but um, we're all handling these okay so far. U is zero, so that means that this whole term goes to zero. We could just cancel that out straight away, but I'm gonna just put and 0 multiplied by t plus a half multiplied by 9.8 multiplied by t squared. So we get 400. Obviously, this term goes to, uh, to 0 completely. A half times 9.8 is 4.9. So we get 0 plus 4.9 t squared. So 4.9 t squared is equal to 400. We can then get a value for uh, t squared from that, from uh, 400 divided by 4.9. Should find that your value for t comes out as 9.04 seconds. So just by knowing how high something is, and that something has dropped off that, that building, you can calculate how long it takes to hit the ground from hardly any information at all. Because you know this about everything that is dropped or thrown up in the air or launched into the air, it all accelerates downwards at the same rate of 9.8 meters per second squared. Part B, calculate its velocity upon reaching the ground. So now you know an additional piece of information which makes this next section a lot easier to solve. Uh, so I would advise writing down SUVAT again. This is still 400 meters. This is still zero. The acceleration is still 9.8 meters per second squared. We don't know V because that's what we're trying to figure out. And T is 9.04 seconds. So we're looking for V, we've got S, U, A, and T. So we've got a choice of which equations we can use. But as we discussed yesterday, the best thing to do is try and do it the simplest way possible. Um, so use V equals U plus AT here. If you can use that, then that's the equation to go for, because it's the easiest one to work with. So V equals U plus AT, V is equal to zero plus 9.8 multiplied by 9.04. V should come out at 88.6 meters per second, depending, of course, on how, how you round that. 